Eos. In Greek mythology, Eos, Ionic and Homeric Greek Eos, Attic Eos, Dawn, or, Eolic Aos, Doric Aos, is a Titanus and the goddess of the dawn, who rose each morning from her home at the edge of the Oceanus. Eos had a brother and a sister, Helios, god of the sun, and Selene, goddess of the moon. Eos is cognate to the Vedic goddess Ushas, Lithuanian goddess Osrin, and Roman goddess Aurora, Old Latin Asosa, all three of whom are also goddesses of the dawn. All four are considered derivatives of the Proto-Indo-European stem H2 Usos, later Osos, Dawn, a stem that also gave rise to Proto-Germanic Ostro, Old Germanic Ostara and Old English Istra, Istri. This agreement leads to the reconstruction of a Proto-Indo-European Dawn goddess. There are no known temples, shrines or altars to Eos. However, Ovid seems to allude to the existence of at least two shrines of Eos, as he describes them in plural, albeit few, in the lines Ovid may therefore have known of at least two such shrines. The dawn goddess Eos was almost always described with rosy fingers, Omicron Delta Omicron Delta Capitao Upsilon Lambda Omicron Sigma, Rhododactylos, or rosy forearms, Omicron Delta Pieta Chi Upsilon Sigma, Rhoda Pekis, as she opened the gates of heaven for the sun to rise. In Homer, her saffron-colored robe is embroidered or woven with flowers, rosy fingered and with golden arms. She is pictured on attic bases as a beautiful woman, crowned with a tiara or diadem and with the large white feathered wings of a bird. From the Iliad, Quintus Smyrnius pictured her exulting in her heart over the radiant horses, Lampus and Phaeton, that drew her chariot, amidst the bright-haired hoary, the feminine hours climbing the arc of heaven and scattering sparks of fire. She is most often associated with her Homeric epithet rosy-fingered, rhododactylos, but Homer also calls her Eos Erigenia Hesiod wrote thus Eos, preceded by the morning star, is seen as the genetrix of all the stars and planets, her tears are considered to have created the morning dew, personified as Ursa or Hers, Ovid, Metamorphoses 13.621-2. Eos is the daughter of Hyperion, a bringer of light the one above, who travels high above the earth and of Thea, the divine. Her brother was the sun god Helios, and her sister was Helene, the moon goddess. Her team of horses pull her chariot across the sky and are named in the Odyssey as Firebright and Daybright. She was the mother of several notable offspring, including the winds, Zephyrus, Boreas, and Notus, and the morning star, Eosphoros, all of whom she bore to the titan Astrius, of the stars, and Memnon, her son by Tithonus. This rosy-fingered, saffron-robed and golden throne goddess, who goes up to Olympus to announce the light to the immortals, fell in love several times, and some say it was Aphrodite who cursed her to be perpetually in love, because once had Eos slain with Aphrodite's sweetheart Ares, the god of war. Eos is the daughter of Hyperion and Thea and sister of Helios the sun and Selene the moon, who shine upon all that are on earth and upon the deathless gods who live in the white heaven he see it told in Theogony. 371 to 374. The generation of Titans preceded all the familiar deities of Olympus who largely supplanted them. According to Pseudo Apollodorus, Eos consorted with the war god Ares and was thereupon cursed with unsatisfiable sexual desire by the jealous Aphrodite. This caused her to abduct a number of handsome young men, most notably Cephalus, Dithonus, Orion, and Clytus. The good looking Clytus was made immortal by her. She also asked for Tithonus to be made immortal, but forgot to ask for eternal youth, which resulted in him living forever as a helpless old man. According to Hesiod by Tithonus Eos had two sons, Memnon and Amathion. Memnon fought among the Trojans in the Trojan War and was slain. Her image with the dead Memnon across her knees, like Thetis with the dead Achilles are icons that inspired the Christian Pieta. The abduction of Cephalus had special appeal for an Athenian audience because Cephalus was a local boy and so this myth element appeared frequently in attic base paintings and was exported with them. In the literary myth Zeus kidnapped Cephalus when he was hunting and took him to Syria. The 2nd century CE traveler Pausanias was informed that the abductor of Cephalus was Hamera, goddess of day. Although Cephalus was already married to Procris, Eos bore him three sons, including Phaeton and Hesperus, but he then began pining for Procris, causing a disgruntled Eos to return him to her and put a curse on them. In Hegina's report, Cephalus accidentally killed Procris some time later after he mistook her for an animal while hunting. In Ovid's Metamorphoses 7, Procris, a jealous wife, was spying on him and heard him singing to the wind, but thought he was serenading his ex-lover Eos. 
Gods. Among the Etruscans, the generative dawn goddess was Thyssen. Depictions of the dawn goddess with a young lover became popular in Etruria in the 5th century, probably inspired by imported Greek vase painting. Though Etruscans preferred to show the goddess as a nurturer, curatrophos, rather than an abductor of young men, the late archaic sculptural Akraterian from Etruscan seer, now in Berlin, showing the goddess in archaic running pose adapted from the Greeks, and bearing a boy in her arms, has commonly been identified as Eosencephalus. On an Etruscan mirror Thyssen is shown carrying off a young man, whose name is inscribed as Tintu less than slash small. The Roman equivalent of Eos is Aurora, also a cognate showing the characteristic Latin roticism. Dawn became associated in Roman cult with Matuta, later known as modern Matuta. She was also associated with the sea harbors and ports, and had a temple on the Forum Boarium. On June 11, the Matralia was celebrated at that temple in honor of modern Matuta. This festival was only for women during their first marriage. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.